Hey, great news. Elaine Musk has got a electric truck coming out. I'm excited about that, but we'll get into some of that. Hey, we're giving $1,000 each to two lucky winners. Tell you more about that coming up. Broadcasting live from Studio X in the great country of Texas. I'm Scott Allen Turner, the financial rock star. If you get a question like answered on the show, do we do that money, business, and life? Get in touch with us at goaskscott.com. It's that time of year for the great procrastinators of the world to submit their essays to the Scott Allen Turner Personal Finance Scholarship. We give one thousand dollars to a high school graduating high school senior and $1,000 to someone who is already in college, enrolled in college. You submit your essay. It's pretty easy, what you learn about money. I need your help, listeners, sharing that link. It'll be in the show notes. We're going to have this up on social. Get the word out about this. Great scholarship opportunity for people. Today, we're sharing one from Emily. This just came in a couple of days ago because young people of the world these essays are about what they learned about money and their goldmine of information. You'll hear these and think, oh, I did that. Or yes, that is exactly right for parents or grandparents. Sometimes you hear this stuff and think, I wish my children or kids would listen to this stuff because if you're a bit like me, you probably did not listen to your parents in regards to money growing up or not everything that they had told you about. But let me give you a little nugget here. They will listen to me because I'm not you sometimes. (laughs) So here's from Emily. One of the most prominent childhood memories I have is of my mother at the peak of her stressful marriage to my father. I came home from school one day to find her crying over my parents' financial statements on our computer. My parents were in over their heads in debt. Yes, they taught me about spending and saving. That's kind of normal for most kids. That's what I learned. Emily continues, but if I'm being honest, much of what I have learned about personal finance was created from seeing where my parents went wrong and when it came to budgeting. Not only did this help me understand healthy ways to approach finances, it also motivated me to pursue a career in finance so that I can dedicate my career to helping others reach their goals and financial stability. And that's one of the reasons this essay st- stood out to me when I was reading some of the submissions yesterday in preparation for talking about this. Here's someone who's experienced these situations in their life, and now they're going to make a career of it, a passion career. Similar to people who may go into veterinary services, have a love of pets and want to work with animals. So figuring out what they want to do, I'm going to go help people or pets in this particular area. She continues, because they had multiple accounts with fairly large credit lines, one of the biggest issues my parents faced was credit card debt. A few emergencies and a lot of impulse purchases later, my parents racked up almost $60,000 in credit line debt. That's normal. That's normal. The amount is a little higher than average, but emergencies, impulse buying, not being on a budget, not being on a spending plan, those problems compounding over time. It can rack up and compound pretty quickly. Emily continues, today is not uncommon to hear people talk about the dangers of credit cards when it comes to creating an empire of debt. But while having credit cards at your disposal does mean you could take on loads of debt, responsible use of them means you are establishing or further establishing good credit habits and your personal credit profile, which is important when it comes to things like purchasing your first home and financing new or used vehicles. It's the nail on the head. Credit scores are important. Credit cards are not the only way to build a credit, good credit score, but they give you the best interest rates, good, the best rates on car insurance, home insurance. If you got to get a car loan, you're in that situation. Best interest rates on a car loan. 20, no, 99% of cars are financed. People are taking out car loans. I don't like car loans, but if you're in a place where you need to get one, get the best rate on it. She continues, the biggest misconception about credit cards is that they are bad. They are not. It is one's inability to use them responsibly that invites danger. That's an important lesson. From my parents' mistakes, I have learned how to use them responsibly. As a 22-year-old, I have almost four years of positive credit history and a diverse credit portfolio that will serve me well in the future. 
One of the biggest things I've learned about personal finance on my own is that student loans are truly a form of investment. Now, some people might be thinking, hold on, good debt versus bad debt. Is it really investment? What about the student loan crisis? I enjoyed this essay and her point because this is something young people need to hear. For me, as with many others, debt is a large form of stress. Taking on student loans is something I wish I did not have to do. But when it comes to taking them on, it is important to understand that in the long run, they are an investment in my future career. Hold on before you're pulling your hair out. Or stick with me here if you're banging your head against the wall. <laughs> Especially because student loan debt has been a hot button issue in our country over the last few years, it is important that students make smart decisions when it comes to taking them on. Here is the, the take home right here. I have friends, Emily says, who decided to pay out of state tuition to obtain their degrees. When they could have attained them from schools in our home state, she's from the great country of Texas, for a fraction of the cost, which is the difference between graduating with $150,000 in student loan debt and graduating with $40,000 in student loan debt. If you had to, um, if you had to pick and choose whether you want $150,000 in debt or $40,000 in debt, which would you rather have? You know the answer, $40,000, right? She continues, as a finance manager, I will graduate with about thirty grand of student loan debt as much as this stresses me out, appreciate her honesty, Emily says, I realize that my career field is lucrative if you're willing to put in the work. Link in the show notes, collegescorecard.ed.gov. That's a website we mention periodically. Kids can go there. Parents can go there. You plug in the school. You plug in your degree. You can figure out what you're going to make on average coming out of that school for that particular degree. From there, you can make an informed choice. If you're getting a degree in finance, like Emily, what are the career prospects of that coming out of school? Let's make up a number for whatever school she's going to. Let's say it's uh, 50 grand a year coming out of school, and she's got 35 grand in student loan debt. You can run some quick numbers there and see how quickly those loans could be paid off in that lucrative career. This is smart thinking. I don't think I would take out uh, $250,000 in student loan debt to get a degree that's paying $50,000. Uh, you would not either. That's why you get to think about these things. She continues, not only will I be able to repay these debts, it is a key investment when it comes to my career of helping other people. It is worth taking it on. And is Emily using her big brain? Mm -hmm. Though I do wish my parents had been smarter when it came to their finances, their mistakes taught me better practices and sparked my interest in the finance industry. Today, they have recovered from their debts and have reestablished their credit profile. So they turned it around. Great for them. And to wind up, this has taught me another thing that people can come back from their financial mistakes. I want to be a financial advisor because I don't want other people's future to look like my family's past. I don't want daughters and sons coming home to a parent crying over personal finances. To the best of my ability, I will devote my career to other people. I look forward to a successful career of helping other people reach their financial goals. And based on that essay, I'm absolutely sure Emily will help other people achieve their financial goals. One of the uh, um, many, many, many or the hundreds of th thousands of submissions that please get that word out about this scholarship. We've got money to give away. All the kids are going to do. Fill out an essay. Deadline is coming up. Back in a minute. 